Hello guys, this is Battle Mix again, bringing you another episode of the Maya podcast. And this time we're gonna talk about a little about particles and and just the basics of them. And we're not gonna get into emitters or other stuff. We're just gonna create particles and create a little scene like you're looking at it. Uh, like the one you're looking right now, or you cr- create some particles and drop them into geometry to s- look at collisions and f- mm, uh, basics about forces. Later, we'll do some more advanced stuff with particles. Okay, so first thing you need to know is how to create the particles. So to create particles is actually very easy. A few things to know here. Uh, We're going to extend our play range from going to be like 200 for this example is going to be enough. And we so we got enough time to simulate the particles. And the other thing is you that you set your play play uh, your playback speed to calculate every frame like it is here in the timeline don't use real time because that will screw up the the calculations and uh, so keep it on play every frame and save that so now we go to the, the dynamics menu here and under the particles, the particles menu, you got a bunch of stuff for creating particles. And we're gonna just concentrate on the particle tool for now. For now, so click the particle tool button and open its options by double clicking here or just clicking the option box here. If you double click here, you also get here. Uh, the first thing when you, first we will reset the tool, so we have some funky settings from before. The first thing you find here is that you have a tool active, so you can right away start clicking and creating particles. So any every time you click, you create one particle, one particle, one particle each time you click. If you press enter now, you create a system of particles, it has some particles as much as you, as you click there so that's one way of creating particles you can create them everywhere you like in, in this case I created in in this plane in the X uh, X C plane so the particle tool is actually very cool it has a lot of options so I will delete that and get to the particle tool again by clicking here and you can um, it's sketched also the particles. If you activate the sketch particles option, you can just click and drag and kind of sketch the particles. Where you can draw something, you can outline something, you can do whatever you want. It's like using a particles pencil. So once you are satisfied, just click enter and that will create your particles. Uh, what I like a, a lot about the particle tool is the uh, create particle grid, which I will turn off sketch particles and go to the create particle grid. And you have two options here. You can create create them with your cursor, with your mouse, or you can create it with those text fields that you have here. If you have your coordinates, you can type them there. <clears throat> I like to create them with a the cursor, so. If I want to create a bunch of particles here on the whole grid, I can just go to this corner, press X for grid snap, click there, go to the other corner, click there, and just press enter, and we'll create a, uh, a grid of particles. All of that, some particles. Now, the other option there, the place, the pl- particle spacing is, how the distance between each particle in the grid so this is one unit the square uh, a grid square is one unit so 
point one is just the middle. So if you want to create one particle in each in each corner of the grid, you can just type here one and create the, another grid here. So there we go. We have a one particle in each corner. Uh, the particle tool creates one particle in each corner. So you click one corner, then the other corner, and then creates a grid there. So to create a 3D grid, just a matter of getting into the front viewport and modifying one point. So I can create my first point here, my second point here, and then I go to the front viewport and hit insert key or the home key in the Mac so I can get into edit mode you notice that the particles become little squares so now I can just click the particle and move it up so I can get back to perspective now and hit enter and now I created like a cube a 3D grid and the spacing applies here also you can see it I have one particle in each corner. So that's what we want to create to drop it into our geometry. I'll go back here to point 0.5 in the placement, in the spacing, and create a, a 3D cube of particles. So I click her first, then here, then go to front view, hit insert or home in the Mac, and drag the particle up like about there then go back to perspective view now again and hit enter and there you have it now this is my particle so I can move it up a little rotate it a little so now I'll create a force to control it too so in the fields menu go to go to fields and select gravity and I had the particle selected when I hit the gravity so they are connected by default so when I click the gravity icon there and I hit and they look purple or pink to represent that they are connected if I hit play now all the particles will go down yay hey they went through my grid yeah because they are not colliding will collide with the grid there so we will create a, a polygons plane now. Let's extend it. Make it bigger. We will select the particles first, then the grid. Shift click the grid and go to particles menu and just do select make collide. Now, if we uh, rewind them, play, now the particles will collide with the floor and they will bounce like crazy so the bounciness is controlling the floor actually when the, in this case the grid you go to the properties of the floor and go to the geo connector the resilience is like the bounce so if you type uh, point 0.1 point 0.2 uh, uh, they will bounce less each time they, they bounce yeah and they hit silence point two they will bounce less each time you notice they they settle now they don't keep bouncing like crazy so now we go shaded view we can actually we can see the particles clear now so we can select the particles and right click and assign a material like you do with any other objects. I will assign a Lambert and give it a little green to so we can see it clear. I will create another object. It will be a helix object no skeleton and just modify the radius so particles go in. Uh, modify the width like that 
something like that and the part to to collide with the helix to I will need to select the particles again select shift click here select the helix and go to particles may collide so it collides with that also you can see it's colliding and the helix has has its own values so the particles are bouncing a lot in the helix so you go against when the helix selected go to geo connector and click and modify the silence I'll put point one point one there and put a lot of friction on the particles so they don't slide as much they lose velocity as they are sliding and you can see the particles there sticking to the surface and then going slowly down there I'll make the particles a bit bigger so we can see them be laid better I'll select the particles Go into the particle shape one and under here in the render attributes or set points, click on the current render type and the point size put it to point four. Uh, uh, put it to five so we can see bigger particles. I'll scale this down a little, it's kind of big. So now particle fall down and they come up to the helix and then go and also collide with the floor and the floor is it doesn't have any friction so they, they keep sliding so we can put friction on the floor so they don't go sliding all the way so the only thing left here is to make the particles look like a blobby surface. For that, it's actually very simple. You just select the particles, go to par go to particle shape, and in the particle render type, just modify it to blobby surface. Uh, we got a bunch of part uh, particle render types here. We'll discuss them later and how you render them and why some. We need some special things for some of them to render. And once you do that, once you modify it to blobby, you have like a blobby surface now. Do you hear just the representation? You can see a representation there are all spheres. You can click the current render type here again to modify its threshold. This is how the the Spheres will blend with will blend with each other to make the surface look more like like a surface, like a blobby surface. If you render now this surface, it will be just plain spheres, no, big plain spheres, but they are not uh, connected to anything. So to connect them you need to um, modify its threshold let's say one if you render again now it will look like a surface not like individual uh, spheres as you can see they are splitting here you can make them a bit smaller to you can see the spheres are falling and then they are getting into the helix and dropping into the plane like that if you render like here you can see how they get this nice effect and some of them are sliding in the in the helix and then dropping here into the floor and some of them are inside and are accumulating You can make uh, like lava and water and a bunch of, of nice effects with this method, with these kinds of particles. So you can modify the threshold so to have less, uh, less, 
can modify the head threshold to get the effect you want. It looks kind of weird, but they are not simulating yet to. There we go. I modify the threshold and they look more like spheres. Maybe we do like them to be one. Notice you don't have to rewind and 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 play again to get the effect once you modify the threshold. It's just a matter of rendering again. That's all calculated in 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 at render time. And You can go way past one in the threshold, but you will cr get some less particles. So this look more looks more like a droplet. Yeah. These particles that are isolating here looks more look more like droplets, and you need a lot of bunch of particles to create some some nice effects like water and 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 lab on stuff you will need much more particles than we have now so that's why we lose a lot of them but they look very nice now they look at that hole that looks cool like okay, well, here we have a hole there so that's all we're gonna talk about particles now and um, get to know them because we're gonna there's a bunch of things to know about particles and we'll be looking at them later for more fun and cool effects that we can create with them so this is better mix for creativecow.net and I'll see you later